Hello, my name is Trevor, and this is my review of the 2021 remake, West Side Story. Uh, it doesn't surpass the original 1961 film, but it is still a great movie in its own right, and easily one of the best of the year. Spielberg directs the 2021 remake of Robert Wise and Jerome Robbins' 1961 Best Picture winning musical of the same name. The remake stars Rachel Zegler in her future debut as Maria, with Ansel Elgort opposite her as Tony. In supporting roles, we have Ariana DeBose, uh, David Alvarez, Mark Face, and Rita Moreno, who all crushed it. Uh, West Side Story's plot is as follows. Love at first sight strikes when young Tony spots Maria at a high school dance in 1957 New York City. Their burgeoning romance helps to fuel the fire between the warring Jets and Sharks, two rival gangs vying for control of the streets. 1961's West Side Story is one of my favorite films of all time. I had no context going into it aside from knowing it was a musical and a Best Picture winner, and I was absolutely blown away. I didn't even know it was an adaptation of Romeo and Juliet. Every single thing about it was just mind-blowingly amazing and fresh and new. Uh, the music, the visuals, the editing, like, just absolutely everything was entrancing. With all that in mind, I had some pretty high expectations uh, going into this new film, um, and while I don't think it surpassed the original, it comes as close as you can to being perfect uh, without actually being perfect. Director Steven Spielberg and writer Tony Kushner were able to do a surprisingly substantial job with this remake, uh, even though the songs aren't changed one bit and the plot stays almost exactly the same, it never felt like a beat-for-beat -beat remake. It always felt like I was watching something fresh and new with every frame. A lot of that is probably due to a lot of fresh scenery. Uh, everything is shot completely different. Like, I shouldn't say completely, there are some similarities, but like, everything just feels like fresh and new, uh, especially the opening sequence. Um, it, it's, it's very different. Different. It's, it's different locations, uh, which brought a fun kind of new uh, and refreshing energy to the film. Um, and that's also the production design, because the production design on this movie is amazing. Uh, it, it feels like a classic musical, um, and it helps it to feel larger in scope and more vast, uh, but keeps it grounded, because it has that classic musical feel. Um, like you're watching something on a soundstage and it makes these people singing feel so much more like real and engaging because it doesn't feel like quite, it doesn't quite feel like the real world. Um, even though everything seems like it is the real world. Uh, it like, it perfectly harkens back to all of that. Um, Felt like Spielberg and cinematographer Janusz Kaminski walked the tightrope of breathing new life into this classic story while also staying true to that classic story, and they pulled it off perfectly. This was an ode to musicals of the past. It was straight out of the 60s in the best way possible. Every single cast member did a great job with their role. Except for Ansel Elgort, not just for real-world reasons, but he is the weakest link in the cast. Uh, his singing was actually surprisingly good, but he didn't bring any kind of strong presence to the role, and in turn, I didn't feel the connection between Tony and Maria as strongly as I did in the original film. Nevertheless, the ending still works. I don't know how, even considering the lack of chemistry between Tony and Maria, I still felt the pain, the hopelessness, and despair slip into the glimmer of hope all the same. And that's just the magic of movies and the magic of storytelling. I fell in love with this world, these characters, and the music. Despite every little nitpick that I can make, I love this movie. Alright, it is awards talk time, everybody! Let's get going, awards talk. Alright, here we go. Best sound is happening. They did a lot of the singing live on set. And, like, the, the mixing, the editing, everything's great. Uh, how they mix in the original score with it. I mean, it's just, how could this movie not get sound? It is the musical of the year. It's great. This is getting sound. If you don't think this is getting sound, you're insane. It's it's getting a sound nomination. Will it win? No, because Dune exists. But it is getting a sound nomination. 100% you can guarantee it. Costumes. This should happen, and it likely will. I wouldn't quite call this a lock yet. Um, but as we get deeper into the season, it might become more of a lock. I mean, just all of, like, the flowy costumes, especially during the America scene, which is great. Uh, Ariana DeBose dancing through the, like, dancing through the, 
street, like, swinging her red and yellow dress around, and then there's a bunch of other people who also are swinging their dresses around. Like, it's great. It is the standout scene of the film, and the costumes look gorgeous. Like, all, all of all of the dresses, all of the, the costumes for the Jets and the Sharks, um, like, everything's so bright, it pops, it works with the cinematography so well, um, they're all graded really well in post, like, costumes are very, very good. I think it should get in, because, like, let's think about what's in there right now. We have, uh, Cruella, obviously. We have House of Gucci, which I think is still getting in, it's still pretty strong. Spencer should get in, even though Critics' Choice, like, tragically snubbed it. Um, I think Spencer should get in, uh, to costumes, I, like, if it's just gonna be Jackie, and get actor score and costumes, like, I think that's its minimum, and costumes should be included into that package, so Spencer's probably there, and then you have, like, Dune, uh, and a couple others, but, like, I feel like West Side Story should get in there, it should, it should, all right, production design, I touched on it earlier, the production design in this movie is Chef's kiss it like it feels like a classic hollywood musical like the sets are so built out and extravagant like everything was built from the ground up even just like you could show the academy the behind the scenes of them building out the balcony set alone and get a nomination it's great it's really really great production design is happening editing Okay, so editing's like a really crazy category this year. I talked about it a bit with Thomas on Oscar Buzz. Go check it out, our podcast. Um, but like, they could do a lot with editing. There's like maybe eight movies that could get in for editing, and it's just the eight like front runners for best picture. Like, the, the editing editing could go a lot of different ways. Um, but I think this can still be pretty strongly considered especially if this is getting sound, uh, like I think it is, sound and editing usually goes hand in hand. We just got that very affirmed last year uh, with Sound and Metal when that uh, won both sound and editing. Um, they go pretty hand in hand, so I think we can expect West Side Story to get into editing. Cinematography. Uh, I, I also talked about this. Janusz uh, Kaminski did a beautiful job with this. It ties in with the production design really well, similarly to Dune, how that tied it in with production design and visual effects. The cinematography works really, really well with the production design. It's just a beautiful movie. I mean, it has maybe one of the prettiest shots of the year. It might be just the prettiest shot of the year, uh, that being um, during the, the song Maria, when Ansel Elgort's dancing around and he's, he's singing Maria. And then he stands and he's in on this like puddle, and then the lights are all reflecting in the puddle. And it's just, it's gorgeous. I, I almost let out a scream in the theater. It was just, it was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Um, so yeah, it's cinematography is absolutely happening. It might even win. This could upset Dune. This could 100% upset Dune for the win. It would be crazy. I could see it happen. Like, Power of the Dog is also picking up steam. Dune isn't as safe in cinematography as we think it is. I'll just, I'll leave it at that. Um, the music uh, isn't eligible. Just for anybody who is saying the original song or original score, it's not eligible because it isn't original. It is all from the original uh, film. I mean, I believe it won for original song and original score there. But, or... No, it wouldn't have even, because it's based off of a play. So no music for any of the West Side Story movies. It's not happening, Um, (laughs) because it isn't allowed. All right, adapted screenplay. So we don't typically see musicals get into screenplay. Doesn't normally happen. They don't like doing it. But if this, okay, like this is, this could win Best Picture. It could. I'll just, I'll lay it out on the table. Do I think it's the front runner? No, but it is strong enough if it can pick up a couple wins, if it does win cinematography. If it can get both cinematography and editing for a win, it's looking very, very strong for best picture. I, adapted screenplay probably comes along with that. Even as we're seeing adapted screenplay get weaker and weaker by the day as we start to see things like House of Gucci drop off um, and Nightmare Alley drop off. Adapted screenplay, not as strong anymore. I I think it's pretty safe to say that West Side Story will get in. It's obviously not winning because Power of the Dog, like there's there's in no world Power of the Dog does not win adapted screenplay. But West Side Story should get in. It should. 
supporting actors. We actually have two here. This could be a double nomination. We have Ariana DeBose, who might win. She is amazing in this role. It is a role uh, originally played by Rita Moreno um, in the 1961 film, for which Rita Moreno won. She won. Ariana DeBose could do it too. Because uh, let, let's think about who else is in supporting actress. Let's think. We have Ruth Nega in passing, who c- could get in, um, but like she's a bit iffy. Kirsten Dunst and Anj Ellis. Both of them will probably get in. I don't think either of them are strong enough to win. Then we have Katarina Balf in Belfast, who I think, I mean, we're seeing less and less of her name. At one point, she was the front runner. She's dropping. She's dropping. As is Marley Maitland, who is also at one point the front runner. Also dropping. We're seeing, like, I don't really see how anybody, like, nobody feels like a winner except for Ariana Bose. There's plenty of people who are like, yeah, that's good enough to be nominated. Nobody except her feels like a winner. I I think I'm I'm probably predicting her still to win at this point. Then we also have the aforementioned Rita Moreno playing the role of Valentina this time. She returns to the story 60 years later, and she's just as good, uh, even in a different character. She's great. She's really really great. <laughs> like I I don't know what else to say. Like she's she's great, and the narrative is there, especially if we see like Ruth Nega on the border right? Katrina and Abelf, probably in, but she's dropping. As, same with Marley Maitland. Like, we're seeing these people drop who are on the bubble. Like, they're there, but like, I don't know. The narrative is there for Rita Moreno. Once again, if this is winning Best Picture, I'm not predicting it at this point, but it could. If this is winning Best Picture, Maybe she gets in. Maybe there's a double nomination here for West Side Story. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, supporting actor for either David Alvarez or Mark Faced isn't happening. There's just not enough buzz behind them, unfortunately. They're both very good. It's just not going to happen. Best actress for Rachel Zegler. Actress is a really interesting category. Let's talk about it. Kristen Stewart. Kristen. Kristen Stewart is probably winning. It's hard to imagine her not winning. Chastain is in. For Isaac Tammy Faye. Olivia Coleman's in for The Lost Daughter. Nicole Kidman, I don't know. Lady Gaga, I don't know. Alana Haim, I don't know. And then you have like Jennifer Hudson still hanging around there. Like, Kidman, you feel like should be in. She surged a little bit, but then being the Ricardos didn't get the best reviews. Um, again, again, you feel like she should be in. Alana Haim. Again, like, she she might be in, maybe, but Rachel Zegler could break in. It just, it really depends on how strong West Side Story really is. All these nominations could happen if West Side Story is really, really strong. If not, Rachel Zegler, like, if, if West Side Story isn't that strong, like, it's not a Best Picture frontrunner, it's just like, yeah, we really liked it, but we aren't going to give it any wins, and it's just, like, a bunch of nominations, Rachel Zegler is probably the first to go. Uh, out of all these nominations, like I just aside from maybe Rita Moreno, um, but it's Ariana DeBose. I would call a lock at this point to get in. But like Rachel Zegler's on the bubble with three locks, maybe four if you count Kidman. It's going to be really hard for Zegler to squeeze into that last spot. Can she do it? Yes. Is it going to be tricky? Absolutely. Um, but keep an eye on Zegler. Best director. I, I mean, we, we had our five for a while. It was Campion. It was Branna. It was Villeneuve. It was Del Toro. And it was Paul Thomas Anderson. After the reactions, it was a pretty simple switch. Del Toro out, Spielberg in. Like, Spielberg is in at this point. I don't think... Like, I can't imagine Del Toro re- like, has another surge back. I don't see that happening. Who else could get in... Joel Cohen, probably not. Tragedy of Macbeth, I don't see being that for the Oscars. Like, Adam McKay, maybe, but Don't Look Up was very divisive. I mean, I really don't see what takes Spielberg out. Like, he did a, he did a phenomenal job with it. It's just, director's happening. Spielberg's getting another nomination. I, I, I don't know really what else to say. It, it, it's pretty undisputed at this point. And then Best Picture. I mean, I've alluded to it. <laughs> this movie is getting a Best Picture nomination. It might win because, like, Belfast 
I don't think it can maintain its momentum. Like, it, it, it was outside of a lot of people's predictions, and then it won TIFF. And we're like, okay, well, precedent shows we should probably put this at number one. I, that's September, though, when that happens. Can it really hold that momentum for six months all the way to March and win? I just, I find that really hard to believe. Because, like, Nomadland just kept on picking up steam along the way. Like, we have to see what happens with the Golden Globes and the Critics' Choice and PGA and BAFTA. We have to see. Because, like, as of now, like, Power of the Dog um, is doing better than Belfast uh, with Critics' Groups as far as wins with Best Picture. I don't think Power of the Dog will win Best Picture. It, it's there. It could happen. But, like... I just, I don't see Belfast carrying this all the way through. I really don't. Um, and West Side Story might be the movie to swoop in and take Best Picture from Belfast. It very well might be. But that is my uh, my, my awards uh, prognostications, which I'm sure is not a word uh, for West Side Story. I will be giving the film a 9 out of 10. I really, really loved it. Just had a couple of complaints but it's a phenomenal movie. Highly suggest everybody check it out, especially in a theater. Um, it's, a, it's a film meant to be a theater. I know I sound like a movie theater commercial, but it's great. Uh, but let me know what your thoughts on West Side Story are down below and what awards at the Oscars you think it will get nominated for. Uh, I'll see you guys soon for more reviews, more podcasts, etc. But until then, stay safe, everybody, and goodbye.